Could I be more confusing? Does that make sense? I'm not asking you. This is a moment of self-reflection. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to pick what I read for the rest of the year. So <laughs> technically, I should be doing a pick my book video for November, but let's face it. <laughs> The end of the year is always kind of crazy. You got all these holidays going on. And if you're a booktuber, you are actually making all these videos about your entire year of reading and and reflecting on the year that you've you've ba all right. Long story short. So what I thought I would do is one last TBR picking video for the year. Instead of the typical pick my book video, what I have done is I've pulled 10 books that I purchased that happened to appear in my anticipated reads videos throughout the year. So these are 2020 releases, new releases. I picked them up and I haven't read any of them. So what we're going to do, three books, thanks to the genre project and five out of these 10 new releases. And I'll explain more about those in a minute, but let's just handle this. Let's handle this. Last month we changed to um, picking, drawing three and then picking one out of the three so that my life isn't that terrible. Uh, but this is science fiction, robots or AI. So our, our artificial intelligence science fiction is one. Come on you. Oh, this one's folded. <laughs> Give me a break. High fantasy, which is so broad in general that I'm not even sure it should be classified as a subgenre, but it's in the bucket. So we're going with it. And finally, uh, mystery police procedurals. I have a ton of those. <laughs> I have a ton of those suckers laying around. Okay. Well, guess what? High fantasy. Bye. It's... <laughs> What, what's going to happen is every month that I'm drawing three, I'm going to draw some fantasy subgenre and I'm going to stick it back in the bowl. And eventually I'm going to have 20 fantasy subgenres in here and like one of every other type. I can't, don't, don't let me do that. I cannot do that. So, uh, between mystery police procedural and sci-fi robots, AI, it's, I'm going to have plenty to read. I'm going to just going to go with mystery police procedural because this will help me knock not only in this video am I trying to knock some books off of my physical TBR shelf but this will help a lot so three books in the mystery police procedural subgenre and then five of the 10 options I'm about to show you. So here's how I envision this working. I'm going to tell you about these 10 books. Like I said, each one of them is a 2020 release. Each one was highly anticipated by moi. You are going to tell me which five of the 10 you most want me to read. And I need you to rank those five from number one, most wants you to read it to number five. Really, really wants you to read it, but I'd rather see you read four through one. Okay. And then I'm going to assign point values to them, which means that if something is your first place, then it's going to get five points. If it's second place, it's going to get four points. If it appears as someone's number three, three. If it appears as someone's number four, two. And if it appears as someone's number five, one. The five books with the most points are the books that I will read in the months of November and December. Could I be more confusing? Does that make sense? I'm not asking you. This is a moment of self-reflection. Most recently hauled is One by One by Ruth Ware. This is a this is an isolated mystery novel. So all of these co-workers go to this ski resort and the Swiss in the Swiss Alps, French Alps, French Alps. Yes, all these co-workers go to a ski resort in the French Alps as sort of this excursion. And then an avalanche hits and it strands them all there together. And then one by one, 
their group gets smaller and smaller. I realize I can't say someone murders them because I don't really know, but one by one, their group gets smaller and smaller. So uh, next is a book that I can't believe I have not read yet. This is What Lies Between Us by John Mars. Uh, but this is the story of two women, Nina and Maggie. And Maggie has done something to Nina that Nina can never forgive. In fact, it's so severe that Nina just goes ahead and keeps Maggie chained up in her attic. Meanwhile, Maggie knows some information that could change Nina's mind, but isn't telling Nina. It says in this house, the truth is more dangerous than the lies. So John Mars, huge fan, one of my favorite authors. This was his 2020 release. Can't believe I haven't read it yet. I've seen on Goodreads that some folks that I know love it, rated it five stars. Let me know if it makes your top five. <laughs> I mean, every book on this list, I cannot believe I haven't read yet because I was dying to read all of them. And yet here we are. Uh, he started it by Samantha Downing. This is the story of three siblings, I believe, who are called together because of their grandfather's inheritance. And I think that they end up battling it out to see who will walk away with the biggest prize. I love, I just, the concept is great and the cover is great and the things that I've heard about it also pretty great. I'm sure you've seen it around booktube. I did a book look with the cover. Next is The Wicked Sister. This is by Karen Dion. This was a highly anticipated follow-up for me anyway to The March King's Daughter. It is about a girl who uh, voluntarily committed herself to a psychiatric institution because she believed that she was responsible for the death of her parents. And she stayed there for 15 years, pretty much cut off from everything and cut off from society. And then for some reason, somehow she begins to learn the truth behind the actual events and begins to doubt the own, her own guilt that she convinced herself of. So it's about her reemerging into society and getting all of these answers and probably tragically finding out that she wasted 15 years of her life. But, you know, that's just speculation at this point. And apparently there must be a sister in there somewhere. So I don't know, but was looking forward to, to it. Not going to lie. Uh, next is the book Playing Nice. This is by J.P. Delaney. This I haven't heard much about. Uh, I, I've taken notice that a couple of people I'm subscribed to have read it, but I haven't listened to what they think of it because I don't want to know. Uh, but it was highly anticipated for me. This is the story of two couples who both have children on the same day or near to the same day in the same hospital. And those children ended up getting switched at birth. And one couple shows up on the other couple's doorstep, I believe 18 months into raising the child and says, this child is yours and that child is mine. And right then, right, my mind starts spinning and I can imagine all of the possibilities and gut-wrenching heartache around a story like that. So huh, let me know if you want to take that ride with me because that could be interesting. Um, one of my subscribers did read this, liked it and said that they were looking forward to hearing my thoughts on it. So, um, Now's your opportunity to vote. Next is the novel Don't Turn Around. This is by Jessica Berry. I read Jessica Berry's debut novel called Free Fall in 2019, and I enjoyed it. This is the story of two women who are strangers until they find themselves traveling in a vehicle together, being pursued by a killer. I mean, I guess it doesn't explicitly say 18 wheeler. But it says when a truck pulls up fast behind them, they assume the driver must be a punk teenager or a trucker with road rage. So I don't know why a teenager would be driving a big truck, but I also don't know why someone driving a smaller vehicle would be assumed to be a trucker. I don't know. But I'm going with 18 wheeler because it's way more menacing and it has me way more frightened already. So... This sounded just heart poundingly good. Yeah, it's really the only one on this list that sounds like a super intense, suspenseful read.
Next is The Shadows by Alex North. This is the follow-up to The Whisper Man, which I loved. It takes place in the same town, I believe, as The Whisper Man did, Featherbank. And it is the story of three friends. The Our main protagonist is Paul. And when Paul was young, his friend Charlie killed their other friend and then disappeared. <laughs> without a trace. And so Paul had moved away for a while when he returns to Featherbank to take care of his mother. His mother starts telling them, telling him all these things about how she feels that something's in the house with her. Uh, he thinks that she's paranoid, but then he starts to feel like someone's following him. And there's a detective in town who appeared in the whisper man. She happens to be investigating a copycat killer, though it's not explicitly stated that the copycat is of the murder that Charlie committed. But anyways, uh, so having not read the book, I mean, I would guess I would assume that Paul starts to suspect that Charlie has returned and is after him now too. So, and finally in the thriller mystery thriller genre is the night swim by Megan Golden. This is the story of a woman who has a podcast based on true crime and she is pursuing a story about a prominent, I believe, teenage boy or a, the son of a prominent individual raping someone and his trial and such. And while she's living that for her podcast, someone is trying to get her attention to get her to cover their own story, I think, is how it goes. Um, it sounds kind of involved, not going to lie. The most praise I've seen it receive is from Kayla at Books and Lala, who really loved it um, for the most part. I guess there's a lot of courtroom, uh, courtroom scenes and some legal drama, so <sighs> there's that option. And finally, I have two romance novels from my anticipated reads list. So the first is The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgenthaler. I've been really looking forward to reading this book. But this is the story of a woman who goes to Moose Springs, Alaska. And she encounters a man who runs a diner called The Tourist Trap, who absolutely hates tourists. And says he had a strict no tourist policy until she broke all of his rules. So romantic comedy, Alaska setting, which I freaking love and big tough guy whose walls are broken down by carefree female, I guess. I don't know. And finally, Dear Enemy by Kristen Callahan. This is the story of, this is the story of a woman named Delilah who is contacted by her sister's ex-boyfriend, Macon, whom she hated. And Macon tells her, hey, your sister stole something from me and I'm super unhappy about it. So either like get me your sister, get me the thing, or come up with some other arrangement. I'm going to turn her in or, or tell your mother or, or whatever. I don't know. So Delilah agrees to sort of pay off this debt to Macon by being his assistant or something, his personal assistant, chef, personal assistant. Okay. And it says, even though Delilah clearly hates him, there's something about her that feels like home. Besides, they're no longer kids. And what once was a bitter rivalry has the potential to be something sweeter, something like forever. So this is an enemies to lover story. I just thought it was an interesting dynamic. The ex-boyfriend of a sibling and the rivalry between them. Those are your 10 options. Again, those 10 options will be whittled down to five and those five books I will read in November and December on top of three books from the police procedural subgenre of mystery. This is a police procedural. So if you're tempted to vote as for this as one of your top five, feel free. But just keep in mind that if this doesn't make the cut, it's something I could read for police procedural. Not that that would be, you know, taking me out of my comfort zone, which was the goal of the genre project. But I'm just saying, I'm trying to cheat the system for you here, people. So you get 
as many new release titles as possible in November and December. But just to recap, let me know of those 10 books. And again, I'll list them down in the, the description box as well. Uh, but let me know of those 10 books, what your top five are and rank them from first place to fifth place. And then I'll worry about the rest, <laughs> but I'll make sure that the book that the people want to hear about the most is definitely one that I read. And I think that'll take Kiss through the end of the year. It should, <laughs> if it doesn't, too bad. So it's two months. I would typically read eight to 10 books in those two months. And these five books plus three from the police procedural category, that makes eight. So yeah, I mean, it's equal. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's comparable, which doesn't leave a lot of room for all that busy stuff that I was talking about earlier in this video, but you know, poof. We'll see. But thank you so much for watching. And as always, thank you so much for participating in these videos for me. I truly appreciate it. I will see you all very soon.